All right, hello everybody. I have, I mentioned this in my previous video, but I actually had two figures that I had ordered, goodness, probably before COVID or circa COVID, 2020 or 2019, um, that have just shown up. This is the number, this is number two. And I believe, well, I'll leave it as a bit of a surprise. Or wait, it's probably gonna be in the title. I think this is supposed to be a Lindis figure. <laughs> Let's see with my address on there, in there. Might have to cut that a little bit. Oh wow. So I ordered this a while back and it just showed up. It is from the first um, Fire Emblem that was on Game Boy Advance. Um, the one with Lynn and Ellie Wood and Hector. It's called, what is it called? Rekka no Ken in, the, in Japan? But it was just sold as Fire Emblem here in the US. So this is one of my favorite characters, Lindis. Or Lynn from Fire Emblem. Let's carefully open this up and see what we've got here. Careful. There we go. So we'll just kind of showcase the. So she's in her. Famous sword fighting pose from some of the character art. And it looks like this is going to be another figure that is mostly a single piece. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it is nice to get figures that have all kinds of like extra tchotchkes that you can do to like change them up and stuff. But, Luna's just about perfect the way she is. So we've got our instructions sheet. Fairly thin sheet of paper here. Nothing too complicated. Handle with care, use no more force than necessary. Japanese side. Oh, hold on, let me center that up a little bit. I mean, yeah, this is nice. They they manufactured it in a way that would make it easy for people in the U.S. or other English-speaking countries to pick it up. Good smile has been nice like that. Is there some tape here? Once again, carefully go through and remove or cut through, just nick the tape upward and then tear. It's safer, less likely to, to cut things that aren't supposed to be cut. And there's probably one more right here. Sorry, it's a little hard to put this all in. There we go. All right. Let's open this up carefully. Top plate goes away. Here's the stand. The grassy plains of Lynn's home, where she grew up. We've got multiple sheets of plastic protecting the, the figure here, including a piece of bubble wrap for her hair. So we'll just We'll just kind of rotate this around a little bit. There we go. So we've got her her hair here, nice. We've got her her sash. This is pre um, class change, Lynn. So less less heavy armor. We've got the tassels here, which are not totally stiff, but they're not totally flexible. So you'll want to watch out for those if you're looking for uh, this in the secondary market. We've got her hand here, 
Um, actually, it seems like it moves a little bit. Um, but we've got, you know, fing you know individually uh, articulated fingers. Uh, we've got her other hand here is ready to grab a sword. Come on. Autofocus is being a little, a little goofy. Um, the, 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 the sash has these gold logos or, or symbols painted on. Watch out for those. And we've also got lots of detail on the back of her sash of her, uh, what do you call this, dress here. So there's our Lynn figure. If you haven't played this game on Game Boy Advance, it is quite possibly one of the best little strategy games ever. It is so much fun. So we'll set her aside for the moment. Carefully. She's kind of lopsided. <laughs> All right. More pieces of plastic to get out of the way. Bubble wrap. I don't think there's anything in it. It's just empty. It was just there to protect her hair from getting broken. We've got another layer of plastic that kind of protects her from the inside of the box. And then we have, with two tassels, we've got her scabbard for her sword. Why won't it autofocus? There we go, maybe. I, there, can I make it autofocus? It doesn't want to autofocus. It wants to focus on my floor for some reason. But anyway, you know, you look out for, come on. Focus on that. Yeah, that. Uh, it, it, it's very detailed. So there's a lot of detail here. But there's some gold painted on bits. Come on. Um... I don't know. I'm having trouble with the autofocus. Not sure exactly how to solve this problem. Maybe if I remove enough things from the field of view. Well, okay, so here, I'm going to point to it with my finger, and it's going to be kind of blurry, but I can't seem to make my stupid phone. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is all painted gold. So is this. This has got all kinds of different colors of paint. There's a little button here that I suspect is going to be used to, to have her hand grab it. we got two tassels here that are, again, made of rather stiff but not totally stiff plastic. So you want to make sure that those are both intact. And there's a knot here. like It's actually like put together as, as if it were a rope. we got more uh, stuff over here. Okay. So there's that. Now, I wonder which sword this is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be her Manikati sword, or is it supposed to be the Solkati? It's probably the Manikati, considering that that was the sword that she got early on. But this also comes with it. Her katana. Of course, the game doesn't really distinguish much between different types of swords, which is okay. It's much harder to... Okay, much harder to uh, set up a strategy game where the weapons are all where the weapons all break, but are also not interchangeable. Okay, attach in order of number. So step one, let's top put her on her stand. All right, so it's this foot, I think. Yeah, it's got to be. You got to be careful with these because they can be. There we go. Okay, so we got a pretty good fit here of her shoe in the little bit of the stand. That works well. So now we've got Lynn standing here. Number two. Okay, it says for number two here, it says to detach the sword, the 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 hilt, the handle.
from the sword. So we're going to try that carefully. It doesn't want to... You got to be really gentle with these. I'm not even sure. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do this off camera because I don't want to I don't want to bring it close to my I must be doing something wrong. Nope, there it goes. Okay, so this is a fairly tight tight fit. So the plan is to have her sword be edge up. And it's triangle shaped, so you have to be very careful. But the goal is to get this, to get the, the, the handle through her hand. Or maybe it doesn't go all the way through. Maybe it just... So, I don't know if this is perfect, but it's pretty close to what they want me to do in the instructions. Come on, come on, come on, focus. What is it picking up on? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it must be looking at her face and saying, there's a face here. We want to focus on the face. Oh, something I didn't notice. Check this out. She's got her little hair tie here, right there. Make sure that... That's not messed up. It's painted nicely, too. Okay, so we've got the sword. Now it's time for the scabbard. So what they say here is the scabbard fits into a hole on her belt tassel. So here's the, the button. And actually, it's right here on her belt tassel. You can see it right there. So we're going to carefully... Is it supposed to go? So the interesting thing about this, which is a little bit weird, is that it actually goes edge down on her. That's actually a mistake, I think. Because generally speaking, with single-edged swords, you generally want to carry them with their their edge up. The reason being that the edge then therefore won't rub on any part of the won't rub on any part of the, the scabbard, which is usually made out of wood, and you don't want to rub a sharp edge, even a good edge, on uh, on that stuff. So a little point here, this is kind of interesting. Come on, there it is. Uh, as paintwork is partially done by hand, each product may slightly differ. So, but this is this is the completed image. I'm starting my legs are starting to fall asleep. But uh, here's the completed image. Here is our Linda's figure put together. And yeah, this is this is nice actually. So it's actually like almost a foot tall. Um, which is a pretty decent sized figure. Put that there so you can see it again. But yeah, we'll just kind of rotate this slowly here. Some of these, some of these more statuesque figures, they don't have too many like special attached parts, but they are higher quality overall. What do you call it? Like sculpting, which is kind of nice. You get a little bit nicer lines and, and, and curves and stuff than you would on like a Nendoroid or something, or like a Figma where there's a lot of moving, a lot of re replaceable parts. But this is going to go on my shelf because I really like this character and I really like the game that she's in. I've played through it multiple times and I always think it sucks when we have to switch over to Elwood or Hector as main characters and we can't just stick with Lindis because Lindis is awesome. Um, master of the Blade. Anyway, uh, oh, this was a little longer than I thought it would be, but yeah, uh, we've got this all put together. And this is what you should expect if you look for one. And yeah, thanks for watching.